So today I'm going to be speaking about going from organic to digital. And what that means is I do a lot of hiking out here in Laguna Canyons. And while I'm out there hiking, I scan virtually everything that's in my environment so that I can bring that into my roads and build my 3D roads out of everything that I scan. So I want to give a big shout out to Dell. Um, actually, my whole presentation is going to be using Adobe Express. My first time doing it, but I figured keep it in the Adobe family. So let's hit the presentation mode, see how this rolls. But my name is Jonathan Wimbush, for those that don't know. I'm a, currently a Dell Pro Max ambassador, so I've been working with Dell for the past year using our laptops when I'm out there doing my 3D scanning and everything. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I'm not doing any dances or anything like that, but you'll find me on there doing tutorials. A little bit about myself, I'm a multi-award winning motion graphics artist. I've been doing motion graphics professionally since about 2006. So I've won Pro Max Awards, um, tellies, Grammys, done stuff at Cannes Film Festival for places like Warner Brothers, Marvel. Um, I got the Epic Mega Grant a couple of years ago working with Epic Games. I'm a YouTube Black Voices alumni. And then I also do speaking tours. So I headlined a world tour for the Design and Animation World Tour a couple of years ago, in which I'm going back to Tokyo in a couple of days. So we're going to get that off again. But most people know me from a YouTube channel. So through YouTube is where I do a lot of my tutorials where I'm giving back to the community. So every time I'm working on a project for a client and I hit like a roadblock, I'll go and turn, make a tutorial based off of that and then share with the community just in case anybody else runs into that roadblock as well. So I've been doing that for about the past six to seven years. And that's how I've been able to build up my community and um, let people know how to use programs like After Effects on um, the substance tools Unreal Engine, 3D uh, Studio Max, and stuff like that. So if you want to catch what I'm doing, you can go to my YouTube channel, at Jonathan Wimbush. And like I was saying before, I've worked with studios like Happy Madison. I got my start under Adam Sandler, so big shout out to Adam. I've worked with Marvel, Warner Brothers, DC, Netflix, Discovery, virtually like every studio out here in Hollywood. So got to work with Transformers, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, like a whole plethora of high-end IPs. So very blessed to still be doing it to this very day. But I'm going to be talking about my process of what I've been doing this year from just being out there in the canyons. Like I said, I'm in the Laguna Canyons virtually like every weekend doing 3D scanning of everything in that environment. And then in turn, I make that into a 3D object in which I give away to the community and I also use it in my client work as well. So just as an example of some of the stuff that I scan, this is using Adobe Substance um, what's it called, uh, platformer, I think that's what it's called. So these are actual 3D scans that I've done there in the wild. Like I got like a hiking stick. I got sourdough bread that my buddy had baked. There's a lemon that I caught whenever I was walking my dog, I saw a lemon tree, so I snatched it, took it home, made a 3D scan of it. So these are some of the scans that I did. And virtually, if I see something I think looks cool out there in the wild, I'll just grab it and then bring it home and scan it. Or sometimes if it's too big, I'll scan it while I'm out there in the wild. So my process goes from, I use something called a hardware scanner. Like I started using photogrammetry a couple of years ago, but sometimes when you're doing photogrammetry, you got to take like hundreds of photos and then you're not quite sure if you're getting like good results. So you'll bring it home, you'll process it. And a lot of times you might get a bad scan out of it. But with a hardware scanner, what I'm able to do is I could take this out into the field and in real time, I'm able to scan whatever I'm looking at out there in the field. So you can see me right there. I saw like a traffic cone in the middle of nowhere out there in the woods. I was able to bring my scanner out. I brought my Dell laptop out and I have the scanner talking directly to my laptop and I can scan everything directly in real time. So if I see if I'm not getting a good scan, then I'm able to hit reset, maybe readjust some of the, the lighting or if I'm out there in the field, maybe throw some shade up above it go through, be able to rescan it again. And then that's like how 90% of my scans come to fruition. So as you can see in the top left-hand corner, I was up there walking my dog. I saw like a lemon tree randomly. I think it was somebody's lemon tree. I don't know. So I just snatched it, grabbed it, took it to my house. Same thing with that walking stick down there. It's like, I don't know if I'm a klepto or what. I just grab stuff out there in the wild, bring it home. And this is my back porch that you can see there in the middle. So what I'm doing is, I have these tracking dots and this is called controlled scanning, right? So I took like a bunch of Dungeon and Dragon mice. I, um, I spray painted them matte black and then I put tracking dots on them. And that allows me to get positional data no matter how my um, object that I'm trying to 3D scan. So 
in the middle, you can see that I'm scanning this lemon. And the cool thing about it is if I don't move the dice around at all, it's telling the software that no matter what I'm doing to the 3D object in the middle, this is going to be the positional data that we're going to pull from. So I can scan one side of the lemon, I can flip it over, scan the other side. And since I have that positional data right there in the middle from the tracking dots, I'm able to take a bunch of scans, I can collide them together, and then I'm able to get one dense mesh out of all those 3D scans. So I'm gonna walk through in real time some of the process there. I don't have time to actually do the scanning process, but I have that lemon that I scan right there that I can show you work in here in 3D. So let me pull open this is the software that I use whenever I'm 3D scanning. It's called Creality Scan. The company is called Creality. And I was able to take the 3D model and I combined it all into one 3D mesh. Now, the, my thing that you might notice is the textures are a little bit lacking. Like these hardware scanners, they're really good for getting good meshes. Like if I come over, click on my 3D mesh, you can see that I have a really nice dense mesh here, right? Like you can see all the pores that are there inside the lemon. Even if I come up here, you can see that it's really dense here on the stem. With the leaves, it kind of messed up on because I was scanning it outside. So the wind kind of messed that up there a little bit, but that's where programs like Substance Modeler and then Substance Painter come into fruition because I could go through, I could clean all this up and I could get a really high end scan at the end of the day. So if we look at the texture, even though it scanned the texture in 4K, you can see that it's really smeary, like it's there, but the mesh is what we really wanted because we could do all the hand painting later on inside a Substance Painter. So from here, I export out an FBX file. Let me close this application. And then this is Substance Painter. So I already cleaned this one up, but you can see if I look over here at my outliner on the right hand side, I was able to use Cinema 4D to separate this into two pieces. So I have my lemon, which has all the pores and everything in it, but I separated the stem because when I brought this into Substance Painter, I wanted to have two separate meshes that I'm able to paint separately so that I'm not colliding any of my materials. And that will make sense once I get into Substance Painter. But the thing that I like about Substance, um, what is this, Modeler, is I could come through and I could just clean up the model because when you do a 3D scan, it's going to be really high dense. And what that means is your scan, like my scans there was about five gigs, which that's not going to be good for anybody that's using it in like a video game or if they're using it for VFX for world building, like that's going to be extremely heavy. So when I have it inside of Substance Modeler, I'm able to condense that down. I can smooth it out. I can clean it up. And it's going to give me a mesh that's much more manageable that I could use in applications like Unreal Engine or Unity or even Cinema 4D, things like that. So what I usually do is like, I'll start with my stem here. And you can see, even though I smoothed it out and everything, like I'm pretty happy with how it looks, I still have like this hole in here. And so if I come over and I come to my smoothing tool, think of Substance Modeler as working with like a clay model, right? Like if you remember in like high school, how we did like clay class, when you're working with like clay pots and stuff, it's exactly the same workflow when you're working inside a Substance Modeler. So I could come over to my stem and I could literally just start dragging over it. And it's like adding clay to your model. So I'm able to fill that in, I can smooth it out. And it's like a whole plethora of different tools that we have over here on our right, our right hand side to be able to do that. But what I do is I spend about 30 minutes, I'll just come through and I usually have like my whacking pen with my Cintiq, I'll just come through and I'll literally just paint across everything. I'll smooth everything out. I fill out all the holes and this is the end result that we have right here. So I even did it for the lemon down there. I wanted to keep like all the discrepancies and all the displacement and everything within my lemon. So I smoothed it out just to where it would be manageable that I could use it in like Unreal Engine and stuff like that. But I still wanted to keep it high density so that when I brought it into Substance Painter, I didn't have to really worry about normal maps and things of that nature. Like all my, um, all my detail is still within my 3D model here. So you can export this out a 3D modeler and you can actually export this out as a Substance file so that we could use it inside a Substance Painter. So as I open up Substance Painter here, this is the end result. At the end of the day, what I was able to do once I came through, I brought in that modeler asset in here and I painted everything piece by piece. So if we come down here and we look at just like the raw 3D, or the raw 3D model here, this is what it looks like when you bring it in the Substance Painter, like it's UV'd and everything out of Substance Modeler, and I'm not too good at making 
3D textures. So the cool thing about Substance Painter was if I come over here on my left-hand side, we have this 3D asset library that's free to everybody that has the Creative Cloud um, service on there. So I was able to come through and I just searched for a lemon and I was just seeing if anybody in the community had built an asset for a lemon in which they did right here. So I was able to find a lemon skin that looked way better than what my scan looked like. So I was able to download this SBAR file. And then once I had it downloaded, there's a lot of different attributes that I'm able to go through and manipulate. So this is what that material looks like on top of my 3D scan. It already looks really good. Like we have the discrepancies in there where you can kind of see where the lemon was bruised out a little bit. It kept all the pore data on top of my texture, which is really nice. And if I pull up my properties down here, down here under material, you can see that we have a whole plethora of different uh, parameters that we can work with. So even if I wanted to change out the color and I wanted to make this look like a lime instead, I could go through, easily change out those parameters in there. I'm not gonna do that right now. Let me hit Control Z. But even for like my secondary color, if we wanted to show a little bit more of the bruising, we could have the greenish bruising coming in because out in nature, that's how things look. So it could come through, you could add uh, more pores to it. So I could bring up the pore intensity as well. I could do rim imperfections. So now we're starting to really make this look for the real because we're adding more imperfections into it. And it's just really holding up on top of my 3D model. And the nice thing about it, since I'm doing everything at the texture level, everything is just being on top of my 3D model. So I'm not destroying my 3D model at all. I'm not adding more geometry or anything of that nature. Like everything that I'm doing here, it's just gonna be built within the texture. So when I export it out, it's just gonna be able to be used right off the bat in my 3D model. So as I move up, like I'm pretty happy with how the lemon's looking. But when I came to like my stem, I wasn't able to find a stem in the asset library. So that's why I had to go through and actually build this out by hand. So you can see right here, this layer is called metal rust because I grabbed the metal rust out here of the assets, but then I went through and I just started to manipulate it to kind of bend it to my will to make it look like something I wanted it to look like. So I took a metal rust file, came through, I changed out the colors of the rust to make it look a little bit more stem-like. And then I just started building on top of it. So the nice thing about Substance Painter is it works a lot like Photoshop. Like I'm not a painter um, like pro at any type of thing like that, but I do know Photoshop. So I'm able to understand the layer stacking and how all that works. So I was able to come through, I added another layer in which this is how I get the leaf on top of here. So you can see that I have a leaf and I like the way that the cells looked in there and everything, but it didn't quite look like the lemon that I pulled from that tree. So I just kept building more and more on top of it. So now I added like this rose on top of there and just started to paint in my parameters. I'm starting to get a little bit more specular in there and everything. And it's starting to look a lot more like that lemon that I pulled my reference from when I did my 3D skin. So on top of this layer, I just brought like a basic color, like a brown color layer. And I started to hand paint all the different discrepancies in there. So you can see where I had the leaf connected to the stem. I was able to go in there and manually start painting these in just to make it look a little bit more real. And then my last layer, this is bad on my part. I didn't save out the naming parameter, but for my last layer, this is where I started to really just add in some of the, the browning on the tips there. Because when I pulled it off the tree, just by nature being nature, it started browning some of the tips there on the stem. So I wanted to replicate that as much as possible on my 3D model. So I was able to go from seeing the lemon out in nature, pulling that lemon off the tree, taking it to my house, 3D scan it with the hardware scanner. I painted everything or I, I cleaned everything up with Substance Modeler. And then here in my final result, I'm using Substance Painter and using my, my Dell Pro laptop, just rendering it out within Substance Painter. These are the type of results that we could get. So of course, I would go through and clean some of this up there. I just wanted to show like some of the parameters on that basis, but I'm able to kind of see what it looks like if I use like some type of like render engine, you know, like a wrist shift or an iRay, and I could go through and I can make those changes accordingly. So once I was happy with this, what I like to do since I am community driven, I gave this final asset out to the community, right? So if I go over to my fab page, which I got to exit out of here using fab. I uploaded this lemon of which I got a five-star rating on there. So everybody that downloaded it, I guess they thought it was good because they gave me a five-star rating. But from there, from this page, people could see what the 3D asset looks like. 
They can see what different renders look like when I've rendered it out. And then they're able to download this and use it within their project. So I know a lot of people use this within their Epic Games, or not their Epic Games, their Unreal Engine scene. I have it set up for Blender as well. So you can download a Blender file, a Cinema 4D file, or the FBX if you for so choose. And then I'm just going to start putting some more of my library. Like I said, I've been just scanning random stuff throughout this year. And I've been built my own asset library. But I'm going to start putting this out there more for the community. So if you follow me on my different social medias, I'll have the links to where you can download all this. And you can use it completely free within your scenes. But that's exactly my workflow from 3D scanning to fruition there. Well, let's give it up for Jonathan. Thank you.